another Thursday afternoon. It's four o'clock, so I figured let's hang out and talk a little bit in the Camp Kennan studio. Hope everyone's been having a good week. I've been a busy week, man. Early in the week, we had Tom down here, and we're filming more episodes of Camp Kennan for our Tuesday show, and we have some big announcements coming up real soon about the channel, so we're very excited. Uh, what else is going on? Lovely day today. I got some friends visiting me. You want to come say hello, Oliver? This is my buddy, Oliver. Oh, and look who showed up. This here is Jack and Oliver. These are two of my buddies, man. I know their mom since I was a little kid in high school, and they're coming to hang out with me. But we have uh, some interesting things going on. All right, guys, you want to just stand there? You want to, uh, you want to say something? You want to say hello? Hi. All right, good. You want to say hello to your dad? Is he watching today? Mm -hmm. Yeah? Say hello to dad. Hi, hi. All right, good deal. All right, kids, beat it for a second. I'll call you back in in a minute. Thanks a lot. Nice hat, by the way. Anyway, guys, we... Uh, just want to say a few things. We got a lot going on. Uh, if you guys are interested in the Camp Cannon t-shirt, you can check those out at the Camp Cannon store. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you like this. And we're coming to you from the studio because I had some interesting things happening and we're going to get into it. I figured it's kind of a fun way for us to talk to each other about hatchling tortoises. I've got some hatching right now. These little guys are fresh out of the egg. We got some elongated and some redfoot tortoises. So what I'm going to do is I'll pull two out we're going to talk a little bit about them, so check them out. Is everyone on there? Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, it should be starting. Yeah, there we go. All right, excellent. I just want to make sure you guys are all out there. So we got some really cool little tortoises, and we're going to get in depth here in a moment. And I'm also going to pull some uh, some hatchlings out of the incubator that are just poking out of the shell. But here's a uh, elongated tortoise baby right there. And this is a really pretty yellow, uh, excuse me, red foot popping out right now. So um, we'll go on over here, and I'm going to get to the smaller or the close-up camera, we could talk a little bit, uh, and then I'll get to some of the questions, but I just figured it, like I said, guys, really cool for us to talk about these tortoises. Um, my fingers are wet, so it's hard to move on the trackpad. Give me a second. I made the trackpad wet, so we're screwing everything up here. All right, here we go. Go to the FaceTime camera. That should work. All right, there we are. So here's an elongated, uh, still got his little yolk sac there's some vermiculite on that as well and that'll get absorbed uh, over the course of the next week and this is what's actually going to be nourishing the tortoise um, while he is kind of you know finishes growing and even when this seals up there's enough nutrients left inside the belly of this animal that he doesn't need to eat for a couple of weeks after hatching so that's pretty cool dave campsell hey what up dante falls thank you so much for your contribution man appreciate it a uh, little shout outs to the folks out there um, so anyway, uh, this is the pretty red foot and I've got a crazy looking red foot. I'm going to dig out here in a little bit. So these guys just hatch and what I like to do and what we can discuss is when you have hatchling tortoises, one of the first things I like to do is I like to get these guys soaking, uh, because you know, even though they're in the incubator and it is kind of moist and there's a lot of humidity, you want to make sure they get their first drink. So that's what's going on right now. These guys are in here soaking. It helps clean off any of the eggshell that might be stuck to them because it dries and you can peel off that eggshell and it'll help them kind of whatever um, of the fluid from the eggs are on their shells it helps get that off it's their first bath so that's pretty cool um, so let's see uh, Waleska Gonzalez how many do I hatch it depends I get over uh, 600 sulcatas every year we get about a hundred redfoots uh, hundreds of um, elongated and uh you know it's kind of nuts you know so um there's a lot going on that's what's happening here but i think now maybe i'm gonna go grab let's go to the incubator and we're gonna grab yet another another tortoise that's hatched now i think you guys are gonna dig this actually this is kind of cool so let me get right back to the Logitech camera let's see help me my reese turtle laid an egg what temperature should i incubate it please dorian amala all right dorian here's the deal with your reeves tools, they're going to want about 70 percent humidity okay and they're going to need um you know you're going to want that vermiculite or their substrate that you're incubating them in to be uh moist you know but not wet so when you squeeze it water shouldn't come out it should actually just clump together nicely but it's going to be moist you're going to put the eggs in there in that container maybe a couple of little holes and you're going to incubate it at around 85 86 degrees and that should do you good for about 60 70 days you should get some babies out there. But now I'm going to walk over here, and I'm going to bring my buddies back in, Oliver and Jack. You guys can come back in. Just don't trip over any of the cords because you'll have a bunch of people on the Internet really upset that the feed went out. 
but we're going to uh, we're going to come on over here and we're going to test their knowledge. Let's see if these guys are watching Camp Kennan episodes and doing good here. But oh, you're going to love this, people. So this is I'm going to go back to the other camera and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about what you're going to see right now. It's probably one of the more popular turtles out there, uh, tortoises, excuse me. And of course, we're talking about the sulcatas. So check it out, people. These little guys are hatching out right now. And what I like to do is I like to leave them in the incubator for a little while. And there's two reasons for that. The first reason is, number one, you want them to absorb their yolk sac, right? The other reason is, is when they walk around, they start to stimulate the other eggs. And, and the ones that are developed, they wake them up. They wake their brothers and sisters up. So you see that yolk? That yolk is being absorbed. So I'm going to take this little guy and I'm going to start putting them in the bath. I'm going to start putting them in with these other tortoises. We're going to see who's looking good. So I want Jack to pick one up, and I want you to tell me what you think of their yolk sac if it's ready. Pick one up and flip it upside down and show everyone else. All right, so what do you think, Jack? Is that tortoise ready to go for a bath? Yes, say it loud. You got to say it loud so everyone can hear it. Good man. All right. So basically, guys, you want, it, you want the yolk to be kind of become being absorbed. And again, that's absorbed, and you just place them in here. And I'm going to show you some up. Oh, well, this one, look at this one, guys. Oliver, what do you think? Is that yolk ready to go? Yeah. No, it is not. Oliver Cooper, man, thank you so much for your donation. Uh, the baby cherry heads ate for the first time yesterday. So happy with them. Oliver, I'm assuming that you're one of the fine people that purchased one of the tortoises this weekend. So thank you very much. And thanks for your question. Get out of here, you. This kid just loves being on camera. But anyhow, uh, I'm really happy to hear that it's eating and doing well. So right on, dude. But we're going to get back to work. So this guy is going to stay in. And let's see. Oh, this guy's still got some yolk hanging down. So he's going to stay in for a little while longer. And let's clean it off. Yeah, this guy's yolk is still too exposed. So this is what I'm showing you this, folks. I want you to see when it's safe. What do you think, fellas? Both of you, what do you think? Everyone out there, is it ready? Yes. Yes. All right, good deal, man. We're going to put him in here. So we got about four sulcatas that are ready to come on out. But I want to show you something else really cool, guys. Uh, this is pretty neat. Um, how about a sulcata that's just about peeking out right now? He just pipped. That's called pipping. When they use their egg tooth to start to break out of the shell, they call that pipping. There's his eye. He's hanging out. It's pretty cool, man. Uh, pretty stoked on that. So what I like to do, though, is since this guy's going to be popping out we're going to get these guys back into the um into their little hangout into the incubator and i want to just check their yolks very good um one of the concerns guys i got to tell you another thing man you know i don't just tell you the good news i tell you what else to look out for so check this out this egg no bueno all right this is why you got to look at your eggs this egg is going bad now when eggs go bad they attract flies which is a pain in the neck. It's, a, it's just a necessary, or it's part of the game is what I'm trying to say. You know, you can't have a completely sterile incubator. This egg is bad also. We're going to pull that egg out. What happens though is the flies will then kind of swarm on the, uh, on the eggs that are bad, right? And you get little maggots. And that can be a problem because the maggots can sometimes attack the yolks of the healthy baby turtles. And we don't want that. So I have to make sure I remove any bad eggs, any rotten eggs. Hey, Jack, you're not a rotten egg, are you? No. Excellent, dude. You're not a rotten egg. Stink a little bit, though. I'm just kidding. You don't smell. Your mom's going to kill me if I said that. And both of you guys are very clean and well-loved by the mom that's just off. She's hanging out over there, checking things out. I'm about to get in trouble. Anyway, what else do we got? Oh, yeah, I got to show you something else sick. We're going to switch cameras back. I got another really cool tortoise to show you, and then I'm going to be more uh, focused on the questions, and I'll sit around and we'll talk a little bit about those questions. All right, guys? So we're going to just quickly take these eggs, place them somewhere else. I'll tell you what. You guys each can throw these eggs in the garbage. They're definitely bad. They're cracked. They smell no good. It's cool having helpers, man. Uh, all right, let me get the next animal that I want to uh, show you. Don't smash the eggs because then the whole house is going to stink really, really bad. So I'm going to show you something I'm excited about, people. Um, and you guys, thank you so much for your help. I'm going to have you guys step right over there. Thank you very much. And I'm going to pull out another tortoise, and I'm pretty pumped on this, guys. Every year, I get at least one of these bizarrely colored redfoots. 
let's see I'll, I'll see if i can hang it up we'll hang it here first can you guys see this this thing is just so vibrantly colored and has such amazing coloration and i'll bring it back to the facetime camera as well but uh, i'm gonna bring this guy out and talk about him a little bit because every year i don't know what female and i need to kind of figure it out but i don't know what female lays these eggs but it is pretty intense i get some really almost like fluorescent colored uh red foot tortoises here and you can see it as i switch the camera right there i mean i don't know is it just me well what do you guys think at home isn't that a pretty tortoise i mean i just love the yellow um the the, the legs are just really vibrant uh so i don't know i'd like to get your guys opinion what do you think is this thing really because i'm kind of colorblind but even i can see just how incredible this little guy is and it also if you look down in here i'm going to peel this down i'm going to look right down in there you can see kind of the uh you can see the yolk that the yolk is still way too large for me to really pull this guy out so um you know i don't know it's pretty awesome tortoise i saw a question from xfar can a baby tortoise eat sphagnum moss probably won't hurt them if they nibble on it but i would stop them from doing that right now um you know i just want to let them eat a lot of it okay uh yeah all right so i'm getting some responses here people yeah thank you jennifer uh dia kunzak how do i say your name i'm so sorry hey do me a favor i really want to know how you say your name jennifer can you write it out phonetically in your next comment and i'll try and say it properly because it's a pet peeve of mine i like to sell do names hey alex alex groff you want to buy him for three grand i'm all game dude he can be yours if you want him for three grand let's do it I think I'm going to hold on to him, though, because this is a real pretty tortoise. But we're getting a really good shot of his yolk sac. And this is not hurting him at all, okay? But I want to show you what their yolks look like. And this will not hurt the tortoise, so don't be alarmed. I'm going to put him back. But that is what a yolk sac looks like, okay? And over the next few days, this will shrink dramatically. This is going to be completely uh, sucked up. So that's how they do it. And also, guys, do you see also the crease? inside the uh plastron or on the plastron of his shell as the tortoise grows he's unfolding in the egg and as he's unfolding he's really stretching and growing too big to be inside so he's really got to uh he's got to push it out and that's what he does he pushes out with that tiny little caruncle that's on the tip of his nose but uh anyway guys this thing is beautiful so let me go ahead i'm gonna put him back i'm gonna actually put him back in his little egg shell here because it's nice and comfy for him. So he's back in his eggshell. That's going to protect the yolk when I put him back inside the incubator, which I'm going to do right now. And then I'm going to just hang out and I'm going to answer a few questions for maybe five or 10 minutes. Okay. So let's switch back and we will get to some questions and uh, we'll have some fun as we close out this video, man. All right. So I just thought this is cool, man. I mean, where else can you see baby tortoises hatching right here in the studio? No place else but my house. I don't know. It's a lot of fun. And by the way, just a little trivia, folks. The Camp Kennan studio used to be a dining room. But you know what? I don't cook and I don't have a lot of dinner parties. So I just kind of turned it into this, this creation. So uh, let's hang out. I'm going to just stand here or sit right down here and I'll answer some questions. So let's have a look at them, people. Uh, all right. Anthony Panos, I will most certainly tell Slinky you said hello. That's the next thing I do after we finish and conclude this, this little uh, live, live, record, a live show. And I got Max on my feet right now. Uh, is it normal for Greek tortoises to burrow? Yeah, they'll dig little burrows every now and again. Russian tortoises dig burrows. The Greeks mostly like to dig what's called a pallet. They'll go underneath a bushy area or a rock, and they'll dig down with all four legs. Um, I do have, uh, as you saw, maybe making a tortoise cave. Uh, that video, I made it for the marginated, but my Greeks do like to burrow into the dirt as well. Um, let's see. Pinier missed it. What kind of tortoise are they? There was a redfoot tortoise, elongated tortoise we showed today. Sulcata tortoises are soaking. Uh, you know, if you guys are interested in purchasing a tortoise for me, you email me at campcannon at gmail.com. Right now, we have cherry heads. They're $200 plus shipping. We have the Sulcatas at $90. We have the Elongators at $150. Redfoots at $125. Shipping is as follows. $55 if you live east of the Mississippi River and $65 if you guys live west of the Mississippi River. But make sure you guys email me at campkennan at gmail.com. And please list in the subject type of tortoise you want to buy. And I'll need your address and also your 
uh, phone number on that email. And then I'll also tell you how to go to PayPal and uh, make the payment. Uh, cool, man. Let's see. What else? Now you see this, but I'm doing a 15 slide presentation for my English class. When you give me a bit more specific autobiographical, then it's on your website. I, Isaac Wales. Hey, man, you're doing a uh, 15 slide presentation, huh? Okay. I don't know what you're doing it on, but maybe you are doing it on um, turtle nerds. I don't know. Um, I'll tell you what, man. I uh, grew up in Long Island, New York. There's really not much else to tell. Grew up in Long Island, New York, was a professional BMX rider, but a lifelong reptile lover. And now I do this for my home in South Florida, which is in and around the Jupiter area in Palm Beach County. Um, I'm slightly colorblind. I enjoy long walks off short piers and uh, like reptiles. I don't know. If I see another question, you can ask me a specific question and I'll try and answer it. Um, let's see. Is my real name Kenan? Yonda Creeper. Yeah, dude. I'm Kenan, not Keenan, not Kevin, not Kenny, Kenan. But the first day of school was tough because they always got my name wrong. Uh, let's see, what else do we got here? Um, have snakes ever been trouble for, for any of the turtles in the yard? Not that I have seen. I have not noticed uh, any of my babies being eaten by snakes. Um, although that is something that is possible. So uh, I would be careful of that. Uh, let's see. Jay Briggs, Jay Briggs, hey Jay Briggs, I think I sent your cherry head today, buddy. Um, let's see, it's a, that's right, it's a, it's a red foot. Yes, I did. I put the red foot tortoise in the mail for you today. What day did it hatch? Oh boy, that tortoise hatched about a month ago. I don't know the exact day, so I apologize, Mr. Briggs. But thank you so much for your contribution. That's five whole bucks. I'm shouting you out. Thanks for purchasing the tortoise. Make sure you email me back tomorrow when you get the tortoise because I'd love to hear that it arrives safe and sound, and I want to hear from you how it's doing. I get, you know, guys, it's really cool when I send out a tortoise, and you guys keep in touch by sending me photos of how it's doing. If you have any questions, you know I love to answer them. I may not get to them as fast as you'd like. I'm getting a lot of emails, more than I'm used to, that's for sure. As the channel grows, you know, it takes a little bit longer for me to get back to some of you, and sometimes I can't get back to everybody, but I do try. So please don't lose your patience with me. I do apologize. And this week was tough because we were filming new Camp Cannon episodes, man. Um, so thanks, Mr. Briggs. Appreciate it, dude. Looking forward to hearing how that little red foot's doing for you. I sent some cactus with it as well, so you should be pretty stoked. Uh, can my leopard and sulcata tortoise babies eat sphagnum? No, nope. I wouldn't do that. I mean, if they nibble on it, I mentioned this early in the video, if they nibble on it, it's probably not going to hurt them. But if they're constantly doing it, I'd make sure maybe I'd pull it out or put less of it in there and feed them more of uh, good food for them. Uh, let's see. What else do we got? Uh, do I only sell tortoises by the jelly? I do sell tortoises. I sell sometimes lizards when they hatch, sometimes snakes when they hatch, but by and large, I mostly sell tortoises. Um, you know, it's only when I get certain other, it's only when things are hatching. I don't sell animals that like say I'd go and buy from a wholesaler and then turn them around just to sell. I only sell animals that I produce. So that part of Cam Kennan isn't necessarily a big business. It's only like, it's something I do as a hobby. Um, and I, I do at this time of year have a lot of baby sulcatas and redfoots and so on. So I do like to sell them to people who I'm educating, who know they're going to get big or, or, or they're watching the show because this way you guys know how to keep them. And plus for you, it's also nice to know where the tortoises came from and know that they had a good start to their life. I think that's important also. Uh, let's see. As far as baby tortoise bedding, I'm looking at Ke uh, Kelvin Wu. Uh, he says, hi, Kenan. What's the best tortoise bedding for a baby sulcata? Listen, it's all preference. Um, there obviously is a spectrum of what is acceptable and what is not. Sand, no good. Okay. Never use sand for your baby tortoises. When they eat, they're going to get sand in their mouth and it'll cause an impaction. I personally like the repti bark mixed with organic potting soil. Because if you're using it for a tortoise like a sulcata, you can let it get drier, okay? Yet if the tortoise burrows into it, there's moisture underneath, and that's the behavior they would be displaying in the wild, looking for a place to kind of burrow in and stay nice and uh, humid. Um, but if you have a tortoise like an elongated or one of these cute little red foots like the one I have right here, um, then basically you'd want to mist it down and keep a little bit more moist. And you can always take for the forest species of tortoises, you can always get leaves and kind of sprinkle some leaves over the top of that stuff. And now you've created a really cool forest floor, and I always like that, uh, you know, that's kind of the best. 
the problem you'll run into maybe with your moms and dads is every once in a while, you might start seeing gnats starting to fly around your house. I don't know. It depends on how organic that organic soil is. I don't like to use anything with chemical fertilizers in it. So I mix it all together and then I put nice, a nice little thin layer of the Repti bark from Zoomed on top. But you can also use the coconut bark or coconut fiber. Just make sure the tortoises aren't eating a lot of it. All right, let's see, let's see. I do not have any baby Russian tortoises. Uh, sorry. Uh, Alex Groff, that's for you. Um, let's see, man. Uh, what is the best advice for me? Because I'm going home on holiday tomorrow and only got a corn steak Monday. How do I know it will be okay? Well, number one, has the snake eaten? If you fed it a decent sized meal, snakes can go a fairly long time without food. Uh, you can put your lights on a timer so that they come on in the morning and go off in the evening, which is always very good. And just make sure water is going to be a key issue. So I would maybe get one of those little um, rabbit watering uh, or like cat watering things where there's a, a reservoir of water and as they drink, you know, it goes down. That should most certainly last uh, a week or two. So I wouldn't worry about that. Oh man, let's see, let's see. What else do we got here? Oh, XFAR, thank you so much. I'm shouting XFAR out. Really appreciate your guys' contributions to the channel. I uh, don't like to, you know, I'm not trying to beg for anything. I know. Someone else last week was a little upset because they thought we were pushing too hard for money. And I get that, but it costs a lot to keep the channel going, keeping this as a business. We're trying to keep the information flowing out. We got a lot of plans. So I do appreciate when you guys do that. Appreciate when you guys purchase a shirt. We're working on some more products for you guys. And we're working on something that will be announced in the next couple of weeks where you guys can become active parts of Camp Kennan uh, with some interesting content that only certain people can get. If they want to become partners in this whole endeavor, we'll talk to you more about that as it goes. So thanks so much for all your support. I love that everyone's here. And I try and answer everyone's questions, man. Uh, yeah, uh, Louis D07. It is a pretty good video today. We're not, you got to understand, guys, when we do some of these live videos, I am out and about in the world. And, you know, I'll use my iPhone on a wireless or through my service provider. So sometimes the video, like last week when we were at Fred's house, which was, off the charts insane, I think. I mean, we had crocodiles chasing us. Fred almost got eaten. I thought it was a pretty good live video. You guys can go back and check it if you missed it. But, um, you know, so sometimes, guys, you, you got to bear with me. We're coming from the studio, so things are a little bit more, um, you know, dialed in here. And so when we do the, um, when we actually do our, uh, our live from the field videos, I try and do it from a place that's actually, um, you know, got Wi-Fi. So last week we were pushing the boundaries. So please bear with me and tell all your friends the video quality will get better as the technology improves. So, all right, let's see. Um, uh, da, 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 da. Let me see, how should I feel? What advice do you have for people looking to get into breeding reptiles as a career? Ryan Marcheski. Ryan, very interesting question, man. Um, I wouldn't say necessarily that I'm breeding reptiles as a career. I think that the, the YouTube channel has become more of a career um it's tough i would suggest going into it only if you really feel like you can keep the animal's best interest in mind there are a lot of people that i met when i first moved to florida i thought everyone had the same kind of mindset that i do uh and how i want to raise animals and keep them safe and keep them healthy um, but that's just not true so many times people view the animals as as money as dollar signs or as a, like in the case of some ball python breeders they're just something to collect you know what i mean um, so basically it's something that, you know, you want to make sure you get into it with good reason, because if you allow money to be the driving force, the animals are definitely going to suffer because, you know, you, you don't treat them like living things. And that's very important for me. I have no problem selling baby tortoises, no problem buying a pet. Um, it gets a lot of people into animals. And I think that's a good thing. My problem is, is if breeders do it in a, in a way that kind of hurts the animal or you're always making a, a female lay eggs, like cycling them in the case of some snake breeders that are trying to get them to cycle too much and you're really depleting that animal's health. So that's what I would suggest. But getting into it, if you got the good vibe and you're doing it the right way, start small, go to a reptile show, buy a little booth. Your reputation is gonna be everything. You know, how you talk to people, how you treat people, how you treat your animals, um, you know, that's gonna be everything. Uh, am I perfect? Clearly not. But I try and talk to everyone. I try and show a good, good nature and good times. And I think the animals speak for themselves. 
So I just want to give a shout out to a couple of people here in the last uh, few minutes. Uh, Tegu Buzz, man, with a big donation. Thank you so much, brother. Uh, I really do appreciate that. Uh, so, hey, Kenny, remember me. Been around your channel since the start, brother. Wishing you all the best, growth, and success. My head ivory female paired with my ivory male is currently laying her second clutch in a month. That's awesome, man. Congratulations. I'm assuming that you're talking about ivory tortoises. Thanks for being around from the beginning, dude. We're growing, man. We're almost to 100,000 subs. We're very proud of what we're able to do, and it's only because of everyone joining together. We're making this little Camp Kennan army, people who have knowledge and passion. Uh, that's what we're trying to do. So I do thank you so much, Tegu Buzz. I hope your Tegus are doing good too. And then I also saw Kevin Wu. Thank you so much um, for your contribution. And you have a question. Is it normal for baby sulcata to rub their nose? If he's just kind of going like this, he might have an itch. Um, if, it's, if, it's, if he's always doing it, then I would be concerned because maybe there's something in the bedding that's irritating his nose. Maybe he's got a blockage in one of his nares. So definitely inspect them and keep an eye on them. And if it continues to persist, my opinion, since I'm not there and I am not a vet, would be to take it to a qualified reptile vet, Kelvin. That's what I would do. Andrew Scott, shout out. It looks like it's pounds. I'll take pounds. I appreciate it, man. Um, you, you seem like you're from the United Kingdom. Thank you so much, Andrew. Appreciate you jumping on, helping us out here. Uh, lots of fun, guys. I want to get to a couple more questions, and then I have to bring these fellas out on a safari, don't I? I promised them a ride in the new truck. We're going to go out in the woods. Maybe we'll get a bonus video out of it. I don't know. We might find something cool, right? Uh-huh. They're just off camera, these guys. We're having fun, man. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Um, hope you can help me. Have you got any tips for tortoise species I can keep indoors? My climate isn't good for tortoises, but I'd love to keep some. That's Joran Bowl. All right, Joran. Uh, yeah, go with a Greek tortoise, Herman's tortoise, marginated, or even the elongated tortoise. Because these guys are all hardy and they do very well indoors if you have proper lighting, proper heating, and a good space that you can allow them to move around and function normally. So uh, that's what I would suggest. Uh, Tegu Buzz, man, what, oh, you no longer, Tegu Buzz, what are you doing, man? Holy smokes. Um, thank you, sir. Uh, you no, no longer keep um, Tegus. Here's another one, bud. I've kept rock iguanas and focused mainly on sulcata tortoises, iris especially, have box turtles that I breed as well. That's really, really cool and, and really appreciate the contributions. I can't say enough, Tegu Buzz. Um, all right, I thought, you know, with a name like Tegu Buzz, I thought maybe you had more Tegus, but I used to have Tegus also. I don't keep them any longer, uh, but they're cool lizards. Get really smart. It's all a matter of balance. You know, I don't want to keep too many animals and kind of mess it up. Uh, box turtles are fun. Um, I love all species of box turtles, the Asian and the North American species. Here in Florida, you're not allowed to keep uh, any of the eastern, I, I'm allowed to keep one eastern or eastern subspecies of which the Florida box turtle is a member. I can keep one of those per adult per household. There's only one adult in my household right now, so I'm only allowed to keep one. It doesn't really make much sense to have one tortoise, uh, excuse me, turtle. So uh, there you go. Guys, man, we've been having a fun time with this. Let me just look down here. Please answer. Let me see. Amanda, Camille, I'm going to try and answer, pal. The vet and others could not. Once I had a Russian tortoise, it got pneumonia. Is it due to me not having UV light? I live in Denmark. Um, I wouldn't say the pneumonia is due to the UV light, but if you don't have a proper basking light that can raise this animal's temperature, um, like UV light is going to help them synthesize vitamin D. A basking light is going to provide heat from above, much like the sun does. So it's very important to have both of those happening in tandem. What I like to do with my tortoises when I keep them indoors, guys, you know what? Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to turn the camera. You're going to see a little bit of what I got going on. Let me just see this. This is a good question. I want to answer it. This is something I like to do. Can you guys see that real quick? You see that tub right there? It's not the prettiest thing in the world, but it, it gets the job done. I have ZooMed, the light fixture, with their, with their uh, T5 bulbs, with their really um, high output UVB bulb. And you notice how this covers the entire enclosure? That is spreading daylight, essentially, throughout the entire enclosure. Just like if they are outside, they're going to get hit by the ultraviolet radiations all over. But when they want to bask, they're going to go underneath a basking light. And this light burned out, so I'm going to be replacing it. But there's a basking light and the UVB light. So one provides heat. The other is all UVB. So I would recommend doing it that way. I've seen a lot of these 
like combo lights and so on, but I don't really like them. I like to have one basking light, one UVB light. Now, pneumonia happens. It's possible since it's a Russian tortoise, they're caught from the wild. That animal could have been sick through transit and you got it and finally started displaying uh, the, the, the symptoms of pneumonia, which is very dangerous for a tortoise because tortoises don't have a diaphragm like we do. So they can't, <clears throat> they can't cough, they can't sneeze. They have to pull their heads in to try and expel the mucus. And what happens with pneumonia is all that fluid fills up the lungs and they drown. They literally drown on the fluid that's inside their lung. Um, so there you go, folks. Uh, so I hope that answers your question. All right, that's it. We're off, man. I think we're done. We did a, we did a solid half an hour today. A real good chat. I want to thanks, thank everybody that contributed, everybody that watched. Uh, I do appreciate it, guys. If you're interested in a tortoise, camptenon at gmail.com. Send me an email. If you are interested in a t-shirt, go to the Camp Kennan website and click the store page. You can order one of our shirts and help support the channel. Thank you very much. What a lot of fun, folks. I'm out of here, man. I will be talking to you guys next week, and Sunday will be a bonus video, and pretty soon there's going to be a lot more content on the channel, so I hope you guys will be watching. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you soon. I'm leaving, for real. See you later.